Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So, as we all know, in the regressive left's relentless protestations that they are quote-unquote tolerant, empathetic and compassionate, there are a plethora of occasions where it is revealed that despite their insistence that they are the bastions of goodness and arbiters of morality, that they are, in fact, anything but. Well, now, one of the best examples of this is how the woke left treats beloved author, Harry Potter creator and women's rights campaigner J.K. Rowling. But before I elaborate on this, everyone, I have an announcement to make. I am now appearing every week, twice a week, on ADH TV. Your girl is hosting two shows, airing Fridays and Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, and I will be bringing you not only the latest news from around the world, but also some of the most interesting people in it. I have put the link to my first two shows in the pinned comment and in the video description. Please give them a watch, and also download the ADH TV app so you can watch me on demand whenever you want. Now, most of us will remember back in June 2020, J.K. Rowling went from being the darling of the regressive left to one of its most reviled figures thanks to her stance on biological sex. That is, J.K. Rowling, like, you know, all sensible people, believes biological sex is real, that it matters, and that it plays a rather significant role in determining one's gender. Funnily enough. <laughs> Anyway, just to give you a very brief piece of context, J.K. Rowling got absolutely trashed on Twitter in the first instance for this tweet. People who menstruate. I'm sure there used to be a word for those people. Someone help me out. Wombin? Wimpened? Woomud? Opinion. Creating a more equal post-COVID-19 world for people who menstruate. Now, this fairly innocuous tweet caused all the millennial progressives who had staked their entire identities on being fans of Harry Potter to absolutely lose their minds in the most vicious, unhinged way possible because J.K. Rowling had the sheer audacity to say something outside the lines of their ideological colouring book. Now, J.K. Rowling, being naturally a peacemaker, explained her reasons for her position, referencing her very real lived experience of being a domestic violence victim as a reason why single-sex spaces are important and necessary, and why biological sex is distinct and crucial to recognise, obviously. But that still wasn't enough to appease the masses. So, J.K. Rowling being J.K. Rowling, that is, one of the most successful authors ever who has a tribe of adoring fans outside of the Twitter sphere, realised she didn't need to take the crap of people who are entirely unwilling to listen to her and has spent the last few years campaigning for the rights of women, that is, adult human females, to sex recognition and single-sex spaces. Bravo, J.K., we love you. Now, considering that not only J.K. Rowling's refusal to cave into the mob, but her continued success as an author, millennial and Generation Z progressives are pretty sulky about her. And while the 2020 Führer has died down, we still see attempts here and there to proverbially re-cancel J.K. Rowling, or at least attempt to. J.K. Rowling seems pretty uncancelable at this point, thankfully. Like, for instance, a few months ago, when this woke bookbinder decided to sell rebound copies of the Harry Potter books without any reference to J.K. Rowling on them, even though she is, in fact, the author. Hello, welcome back to the Harry Potter Rebind series. If you're new here, my name's Lore, I'm a trans artist and bookbinder, and I rebind Harry Potter books without J.K. Rowling's name on them, because fuck her. This is part of what seems to be a weird trend among internet wokies, insisting that somehow Harry Potter doesn't have an author just because they say it doesn't have an author. I think it's a way of assuaging the guilt they all feel at still really loving the Harry Potter universe, despite the fact they disagree with J.K. Rowling on that one thing. So rather than do the thing that would show the most commitment to the proverbial cause, which is boycott the books and the rest of the Potterverse, they just pretend nobody wrote the books, which means they can continue to enjoy them at leisure. Really lazy activism there, sheesh. Anyway, 
In keeping with this theme of unpersoning J.K. Rowling by low-key pretending Harry Potter does not have an author, the Seattle Museum of Popular Culture, a.k.a. Mopop, has recently removed all mention of J.K. Rowling from their Harry Potter exhibit as an attempt to minimize her impact, whatever that means. Now, the fact this left-leaning museum in a left-leaning city like Seattle has chucked a hissy fit and tried to memory hole J.K. Rowling isn't surprising. What surprised even me, however, was the freakiness of the blog post that explained the reasoning behind removing the references. This blog post, which is on the Mopop website and is written by project manager Chris Moore, who appears to be a transgender man and uses he, they pronouns, is honestly one of the most hysterical regressive leftist diatribes I've ever seen. So, naturally, I thought we should all have a read of it. There's a certain cold, heartless, joy-sucking entity in the world of Harry Potter, and this time it's not actually a Dementor. We would love to go with the internet's theory that these books were actually written without an author. There it is. There you go. But this certain person is a bit too vocal with her super hateful and divisive views to be ignored. Yes, we're talking about J.K. Rowling, and no, we don't like that we're giving her more publicity, so that's the last you'll see of her name in this post. We'll just stick with you-know-who because they are close enough in character. Her transphobic viewpoints are front and centre these days, but we can't forget all the other ways that she's problematic the support of anti-Semitic creators, the racial stereotypes that she used while creating characters, the incredibly white wizarding world, the fat shaming, the lack of LGBTQIA representation, the super chill outlook on the bigotry and othering of those that don't fit into the standard wizarding world, and so much more. We're going to be focusing on you know who's transphobic views in this blog post because she's really doubled down on them lately. Okay. First, I have no idea what this person means about J.K. Rowling's support of so-called anti-Semitic creators. As for the racial stereotypes accusation, I think they may be referring to that old accusation that the goblins who run the Gringotts Bank are a racial stereotype of ethnically Jewish people. To that I would say, if you look at a goblin and automatically think Jewish person, well, that's on you, and I suggest you do some serious self-reflection. As for the Wizarding World being incredibly white, it's set in the UK in the 90s. Hogwarts is in Scotland. Having a mostly white Caucasian cast of characters is demographically accurate. And as for the fat shaming, probably that refers to the fat lady, which is the portrait in front of the Gryffindor common room to which you have to give the password. <laughs> Fortuna Major. <laughs> yes, all right. Go in. Thank you. Now, I don't know what they mean by fat shaming. Everyone loves the fat lady, and she's always presented in a positive light. And to the lack of LGBTQIA plus representation, first, I don't think a story fitting a gender or sexuality quota, or any other quota for that matter, should be a prerequisite for it being a good story. And second, Dumbledore is, in fact, gay. There is your representation. Also, I have no idea what this person means by the supposedly super chill outlook on the bigotry and othering of those that don't fit into the standard wizarding world. I mean, what even is that? A bit of history is important here too. You Know Who started dancing around transphobic statements in 2018 and became more vocal in 2019 by supporting a person who was fired for being transphobic. In June of 2020, she fully committed to these viewpoints and went on long, hateful Twitter tirades. Okay, some context. J.K. Rowling supported a woman who was fired from her job for tweeting skepticism about a government proposal to allow people to self-identify as another gender. That's not transphobia. As for the long, hateful Twitter tirades as of June 2020, well, this is one of them. If sex isn't real, there's no same-sex attraction. Except if sex isn't real, the lived reality of women globally is erased. I know and love trans people, but erasing the concept of sex removes the ability of many to meaningfully discuss their lives. It isn't hate to speak the truth. 
The idea that women like me, who've been empathetic to trans people for decades, feeling kinship because they're vulnerable in the same way as women, i.e. to male violence, hate trans people because they think sex is real and has lived consequences, is a nonsense. I respect every trans person's right to live any way that feels authentic and comfortable to them. I'd march with you if you were discriminated against on the basis of being trans. At the same time, my life has been shaped by being female. I do not believe it's hateful to say so. Can someone please explain to me how saying, I respect every trans person's right to live any way that feels authentic and comfortable to them is hateful and transphobic and a tirade? Anyone? And what is Mopop doing? If you visited the museum recently, you will have seen artifacts from the Harry Potter films in Fantasy, Worlds of Myth and Magic Gallery, and her likeness in the Science Fiction and Fantasy Hall of Fame. They're there and trying to dance around it would make me look like a bigger hypocrite. But here's the deal, it's complicated. Long conversations are being had and a lot of considerations around what to do with problematic people and content because instances like this are going to keep happening. I'm privileged to get to work with our curatorial team and see the decision making processes there. So let me give you a little bit of insight into what these are like after someone outs themselves as holding terrible ideologies. While the Harry Potter series is a major player in the pop culture sphere, we wanted to give credit to the work of the actors, prop makers and costume designers in our fantasy gallery. We learned that you know who was a problem, which is why you'll see the artifacts without any mention or image of the author. After all, Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson and Rupert Grint are all incredibly vocal allies. Should we forget their work now that the original author is terrible? I'm not even talking about separating art from artist, but giving credit where it's due. Okay, for more context, Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson and Rupert Grint, who played Harry, Hermione and Ron respectively, absolutely threw JK Rowling to the wolves when she was being horribly piled on by trans activist lunatics. The rank disloyalty and ingratitude for them towards the woman without whom they would literally be nothing, nada, zilch, really is a testament to their character or, you know, lack thereof. Emma Watson has been the worst of the three, which is so typical of women. For example, this massive virtue signal at the BAFTAs last year. Our next presenter is Emma Watson. She's proud to call herself a feminist, but we all know she's a witch. I'm here for all of the witches. <laughs> Yikes. Extraordinary how a museum that is definitely on the left side of politics, which prides itself on being all about solidarity, is glorifying people who have embodied the very antithesis of that. As for the Science Fiction and Fantasy Hall of Fame, the inductees are specifically chosen by public voting. You Know Who was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2018 before she became the face of trans exclusionary radical feminism. Turf. If you keep looking in there, you'll see other figures with questionable if not downright disturbing pasts. But what does that mean? Are Mopop's hands tied on something that is in our building? Again, it's complicated. For the time being, the curators decided to remove any of her artifacts from this gallery to reduce her impact. And there you have it. Another unpersoning complete. The interesting thing is evidently Mopop houses likenesses of other individuals it deems questionable. So why is it seemingly only JK Rowling who has her artifacts booted from the gallery? Well, it's because JK Rowling is a woman speaking about women's sex-based rights. This is why the trans lobby is so inherently misogynistic. It is the height of male privilege. What a shame Mopop can't see the sheer irony of their actions. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment. And if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my Subscribestar link and other ways you can support me.